I love having the extra refrigerator out here. So this is where I store all of my canned cheese. Now, like I said, it would be shelf stable, but I'm a little leery about cheese. Now, I do can my own butter and it's amazing. How much of a blessing it is to have a pantry even if you have a small home it's really nice and just to be able to walk in here come up with a meal I can come up with a ground beef meal a cooked chicken meal I can come up with a pork meal I can come up with a meal that's vegetarian in a matter of moments and so I'm doing a lot of cooking with things in my pantry and so they're kind of hard to make a video on it because I just throw some stuff together but I want to do more with that and also a lot of people asked about my dehydrating They said there's so many videos on how to dehydrate, but so few videos on how to make the food. It's so easy. I understand why people don't really make videos using it because, like, this is chives, so I will put this on top of a baked potato. These are tomatoes. I will throw these on top of a pizza, or I'll put these on top with the lasagna noodles. So I think a lot of people think, well, it's just so simple, they don't need to do a video on it. But I am going to do more videos on just the practicality of having these dehydrated foods. The things I dehydrate, I dehydrate for a snack, like bananas and strawberries and kiwis and peaches. And then sometimes I would dehydrate herbs, which all go into seasoning, which you see in a lot of my videos. I use hardly any salt here. Our dried ingredients is something that we do every single day. And I just want to share with you once again, having a pantry, do what you can. You know, you don't have to have a large pantry. This pantry took me about six years. So this is a six-year pantry that I have here. And my food is always rotated. It's rotated every two to three years. In other words, the older food is always in the front and the newer food is in the back. I tend to grow, harvest, and dehydrate the same foods. And so I pretty much have a small list of foods I dehydrate, a small list of foods I can, but I have so much of it. So it's just the fundamental vegetables and meats and some dried herbs and things like that. So while it looks extensive, it's really not that much when you come to think about it, the actual different kinds of vegetables and the different kinds of meats. I am a prepper, so let me show you a little bit here. This is molasses that I actually used a bottle capper, which I have a video on it. Um, these are chia seeds that I got. And so we have lots of things. Tinctures, I know a lot of you are asking about tinctures. And I am going to work on a video for you because I use tinctures for everything. Everything you can imagine, I use it for. So a lot of these things are just things that I found or things that people give me and then I learn to preserve it. And so that's what it is. These are rose hips. Well, what do you use rose hips for? Well, I infuse this in oil and I make a beautiful salve. It's really good for your skin. Also, it's a great tea if you drink tea. I think having books is really important because if you have a book, you know, books tell you how to do things. And I really want to encourage you to have a small library because knowledge is wealth. And so by learning these things in books, yes, um, having ebooks are fine, but I really encourage you to have the hard copy books because then you can go back to it so much easier. And hard copy books are something that is priceless because the knowledge that you gain from it and having it in your hands in case that you would never have the internet. Organization is the key. I'm so thankful that I was able to get out here in my canning garage and organize all of my jars because now when I have my empties, they have a place to go. You know, organize is really important in every aspect of your life, not just with food and not just with your clothing, but with your life in general. Because the more organized you are, the less stress that you're gonna have to deal with. And being out here, this was stressful because it was such a mess. We'll say there's a fine line between hoarding and having everything you need. You know, I really don't throw much anything away simply because I don't have trash service. And plus I try to use everything that I can. 
And so in here is pretty much everything you need to have a homestead. I pretty much have everything. And that's what it was like in the Depression era. You know, people didn't throw things away. They reused things. And so that's really important to me. And make sure you have a place and for everything and everything in its place. And that can make your life so much better. And organizing and just having things that you need. But knowing what you have. So many times what people do is they don't know they have something. They go and buy it again and buy it again and buy it again. And if you were organized, you could look and say, okay, I have two of these. I don't need these. And I have all of these and I have this. This way you know what you have. So I strongly suggest you take one room at a time. You have one box for things that you want to give away, one box for throw away, and one box that you keep. Go through your whole house that way. For me, clothing, I could never donate because when I'm done with my clothing, they're so bad that even the thrift store won't take them. So I either make them into rags or I throw them away. But so having organization is a real key in your life. And I hope that you enjoy these videos where I share with you how to be organized and I share with you, you know, different things that you can do to make your life easier. You know, I'm starting to work on all different facets of my life, and so I'm working on freezers. You saw me work out here, and you're going to see a lot more of that coming up because I'm really trying to go through everything that I own. As a prepper, we tend to have a lot of things, and so we look at things and say, okay, I can reuse this. I love these jars. I can use them. And so we have to find a place for everything because what happens, we say we want these things, but then we don't know where we're going to go with them. And so it's important to find space and to use it as best as you can. And every little space that you have, find a way that you can use it. And that's what I did out in this canning garage. In times before, when I would have one random canning lid ring, I would just throw it into a drawer. Well now, I have a place where everything goes. In the garage, I'm keeping it cleaned up. There is all of my soap that is curing. I can't wait till it's done. And I love having some boxes so I just put the box right down there and everything has its place it makes your life so much easier my friends so much easier let's go with the pluses and the minuses of everything freezing food freezing food is the easiest because all you have to do is blanch your vegetables put them in a bag and throw them in the freezer but freezing your things can get frostbite in other words your, your things can get really dried out Freezing, what happens if your electric goes out? Or what happens if we all have to be off the grid? Freezing, you're going to have all your food spoiled. Many people that have gone through hurricanes know that. They know within two, three days their food is spoiled. Now we're going to go with canning. Canning is amazing. Canning, you can take your food. Once you process your food, it doesn't cost you anything. Look at this. It doesn't cost me anything to store it. I'm not paying electricity. I'm not paying anything to store it once it's processed. Canning is long term. Canning is great. But canning then, you need canning jars. You need a pressure canner. And you need to have the willpower and the strength to be able to do it. A lot of people are older. They just can't handle bulky big jars and they can't handle that. And I understand that. And you have dehydrating. You get the best worlds of canning, the best worlds of freezing, and you can dehydrate it. It's lightweight, it, it doesn't take much strength to do it, and it's fun. But it does take electricity, quite a bit of it, if you do a lot of it. It takes electricity to dry your food. But, once again, once you dry your food, take a look. It doesn't cost you anything to store it. But, dried food, you have to do something with it. In other words, you have to cook it, you, you have to cook it, put it in soups, and canning, it's already made. I could eat this right out of the jar if I wanted to, but of course I would heat it up. This is vegetable soup. So there is your plus, and there is your minuses for everything. So what I like to do is everything. I like to can, I like to freeze, and I like to dehydrate. And that way I have a full pantry that is a pantry where it's rotating always. Another thing I want to say is you rotate your food. I don't just put this food away and lock the door. We eat from this, so it's a grocery store. So if I need something at the grocery store, I come here instead of going out to the grocery store. 
So I don't have to go when there's a snowstorm. I don't have to go and when this happens or when that happens, I'm here. And my goal is to have everything that I ever needed all at once right here in my own home and have maybe a year's worth of it. That is my goal. And that's something I enjoy doing. Not everybody enjoys processing food. Not everybody enjoys being a foodie. But you know what, even if you're a family of one, you can do it on a really small scale. Why would you do it? Because it gives you satisfaction. It helps you motivate you to do something. And also, I take a lot of pride in all of this. I do. I take a lot of pride by looking through this and showing people. When my grandchildren come, they just ooh and all over everything. They love it. They think this is so unique. And I really enjoy having it. I really enjoy doing it. And I feel like I'm using my time wisely because I'm putting all of my efforts into something instead of doing nothing. So I hope you enjoyed this little talk on pantry life, on freezing, dehydrating, and canning, and organizations. Now you can see me fairly well, but that's because behind you is a door. And so I will have that curtain drawn and turn out the light that's over here. And it gets very dark in here. Your number one your number one killer of your pantry is sunlight. You don't want to have any sunlight. You want to keep it as dark as you can. A lot of people are turning their spare bedrooms into small pantries. And you know what? A lot of people are having a lot of fun doing it. They feel a sense of satisfaction and pride. And to be honest with you, the food that is out of these pantries are a lot better than any food that you're going to buy in the grocery store or at a restaurant. It's so much fresher and it's amazing. Now, I do leave the rings on this cheese. So this will last me for about six to eight months. Probably about more like six months. Depends on how hard I use it. All right. Everything has a place. Everything's put away, and it makes you just feel good about your day.
on. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like my homemaker's manuals, I have a lot of them in this series. While this here was filmed at the end of the summer of 2019, I thought I would inspire you a little bit of the things you're going to see this spring. The homestead comes alive at this time of year and I can't wait to share with you. But here's the videos on my homemaker's guide and manuals. I think you'll enjoy them.